Right, welcome to uh, BA 211, Principles of Financial Accounting. Uh, this is going to be the lecture for Chapter 1, which is the role, of, the role of accounting in society. So we're going to go ahead and go through this lecture. This is really just foundational with concepts in it and not a lot of hands-on for this first chapter, but I just wanted to talk through some of the concepts with you and go, all right. So this is the kind of the chapter outline, or at least what we're gonna be learning in the chapter. And um, as we go through it, one of the important things to note is we're really trying to understand why is accounting important and how does it, how does society and accounting, uh, how is that interface made? To begin with, Accounting is the process of organizing, analyzing, and communicating financial information that is used for decision making. The, the way this works is this is for, this is the work that accountants do, right? So they organize. So a lot of people think that really that's all accountants do is just organize or, and count the numbers, right? But they also analyze, which is important for accounting. So taking the, taking the numbers is one thing and having them organized, some understanding that comes out of the numbers, right? So that's important. And then of course, to be able to communicate that understanding and to be able to lay the numbers out in a way that's acceptable. And we'll talk about GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, and also easy to uh, use for the end users. One important key of this one is, is that um, the definition here does not say business decision making. The authors of the book really wanted to stress that accounting is the language of business, but it also goes a lot further beyond that into the ability for people to be able to make personal life choices, personal financial choices based on the same skill set that accountants have. So accounting is also the language of life. So there's two, t two main types of accounting and this, this the first type is really what this course is about financial accounting the next course you usually take after this one right so BA 213 is managerial accounting so those are two separate courses but it's and it's really important up front to understand what the differences are so financial accounting here really is focusing on historical data historical information what happened last week, last quarter, last year, right? So that's the organization of it, okay, and the analysis of historical information. And the communication, the purpose of that is to give to external users, and we'll talk about those here in, in the next slide. So managerial, managerial accounting is focused more on usable information in the now. Okay, so there is no standard setting body for this. For financial accounting, there is a standard setting body. It's the FASB, we'll talk about that in a minute. But really, this is for internal users. Okay, managerial accounting is for internal users. The, the focus is being able to help managers make decisions in a strategic and competitive environment with limited resources, right? So, we're, so to do that, we use financial information, how much stuff costs, how much uh, revenue we're making, you know, the sales, dollars, but we're also using non-financial information, like how many pounds are we using or, or um, how many hours are being worked here in this situation, right? So non-financial information. So we talked about end users. Really, the financial accounting focuses more on the external user and managerial accounting focuses more on the internal user. So internal first, that's managers and other employees that are um, able to make decisions in the now, right? In the, in the normal operations, managing the operations of a, of a business enterprise. External users is where the financial accounting is gonna be. And that's really for investors, people that wanna buy your stock or, or buy into, right? Invest money in you or into the company. Financial analysts, those are people that are paid, right, to analyze your company, mostly for investors, really. And then loan officers, these typically work for banks in different places like that, right? So they, they need to be able to use the information that uh, financial accountants uh, give them to be able to make decisions on whether to give a loan, right, or issue a loan or not. 
And then um, government auditors, IRS, all of those things, they want to make sure that, that you're paying the taxes you owe and that you are in compliance with government regulations. And last uh, here, but definitely not least, is an assortment of other stakeholders. Community uh, could be one of them. Fellow competitors often get external financial information and to be able to make decisions on uh, for their company as well and compare themselves historically on how they're doing. So that's internal and external. So this is mostly related to financial inf financial accounting, right? So the generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, is the framework that we use to help us understand how to do accounting, right? And how to communicate it so that we can compare apples to apples. So if I have a company in one year, or one quarter, I can compare it to the next year and next quarter. I'm not doing my accounting different because I'm using the generally accepted accounting principles from year to year, quarter to quarter as I go through so I can compare historically back for my own company. And then also, I'm also using GAAP as well to help to help so I can compare as, a, as an investor, a potential investor, so I can compare one company to another company and say, okay, these companies are using GAAP. I'm able to know that they're giving me the information in the same basic format, right, because of GAAP. I can compare them and say, which one do I want to invest in? So that's really for the, the that's the generally accepted accounting principles. Um, that's GAAP principles. That GAAP system is created or, or it is upkept by uh, financial Accounting Standard, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, or, or also known as FASB. So the, uh, the Financial Accounting Standards Board can and does change GASB over, or change GAP or the GASB regulations over time if things change, right? The business that's being done in 2020 is not necessarily the same business that was the same type of transactions that were happening back in 1920, right? So we've got to have some different rules and some different ways of making sure that we are, are all tracking things the same way. So that gets to the next point there, which is transactions. Really, the, this, uh, the, get, the gap tells us how, uh, which transactions need to be um, tracked and recorded and how they're done. So we're gonna talk about this in a later chapter, but Really, GAAP is based on accrual basis accounting. Uh, cash basis is not really GAAP. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, what that means later. As we report out our findings, our financial, right, as we get it in and analyze it and report it out, the financial statements are a very important tool to do this. So the income statement is our first financial statement, okay? Um, and we're gonna get, as we get into uh, chapter two, we'll get into depth into what each of these are, break it apart, be able to learn how to create these statements as well from basically from a list of transactions. Um, and we're going to be able to create these statements from those. So income statement, statement of owners, equity, number two, balance sheets, number three. And then there is also what's called the statement of cash flows. And the, that statement of cash flows is a fourth financial statement. It's not part of the, the main three, but it's a fourth one that can give us extra insight and analysis. That the statement of cash flows is actually going to be at the end of this term. Very last chapter. We're going to do that. That's a pretty advanced uh, financial statement to do, but we're going to, and we're going to work on that at the end of the end of the term. And then disclosures. Disclosures are things that aren't necessarily um, part of the numbers, but things that are important for external uh, stakeholders to know. And yeah, that might not necessarily be uh, disclosed otherwise. All right, so here's just another view of how financial accounting and managerial accounting kind of works. So we have talked about the users, right? So in external and financial, internal and managerial, types of reports so this is what we just talked about we have the financial statements that we just talked about internal reports these are things that are more focused on mixing of financial information and non-financial um, and also talking about internal the, these internal reports for managerial accounting are often secret right so they're not published out to everybody 
They're kept in-house and protected. Um, frequency of reports, financial is very structured. Managerial, typically it's just when you need it. Typically the, the quicker the better. And then in the purpose of the reports, uh, two is to look historically and to analyze what happened so we can also um, look at trends, possible trends into the future for financial. Managerial is the purpose of the report is to change what we're doing now, right? So, so we can get better results in the future. Uh, focus of the reports, of course, that's it's all based on the reports in financial accounting is all based on a gap structure, very structured. Uh, managerial accounting, it depends on what the departments and the managers need, right? That's really, there's no uh, gap for that. It's what they need at the time. We talked about the nature of the reports before, verification of reports. The, the, on the financial side, we'll talk about what a CPA is, but the, the, they're audited. The, that's what's audited is the financial accounting side of things. Managerial accounting, not so much. A lot of times internal auditors will do their audits just to make sure the reports are being done correctly, um, but it's not uh, audited in the same fashion as as the financial accounting. So our three categories of organizations. So as we look at the accounting, we've looked at different types of accounting. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look and say, okay, what kind of businesses do accounting, right? So we have our for-profit businesses, right? So typically we we think that, okay, that those are uh, the main ones that need to do accounting, but but our government entities and our nonprofit entities are also have accounting that needs to be done. And they are, the accounting they do because of the nature of the business, governmental and nonprofit, uh, is structured differently. They actually, the governmental and nonprofit side, they don't have what's called FASB, they have uh, what's called GASB. So it's actually the Governmental Accounting Standards Board that does a lot of their uh, GAP. They still have GAP, they follow it. So, so anyway, so for-profit businesses like we have a manufacturing company like Kraft Heinz here that makes tater tots and french fries. In our community, we also have like Walmart as a retail type business. And there's a service business like, a, like an accounting shop, like Nichols Accounting. Each of these types of businesses, even though they're all for profit, their accounting is going to look a little different. Their financial statements are going to look a little different because they have a different mix of what creates the financial statements right they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have different words different structures and we're gonna talk about that as we go through as well sometimes it's not easy to tell what a, an entity is per se so what is a restaurant is it a manufacturer is it a retailer or is it a service provider you could actually have an argument that it's all three there's businesses sometimes they don't fit neatly into one specific box so as we go through this course and talk about Okay, manufacturers do it this way, retailers do it this way, service companies do it this way. There could be a mix as of uh, accounting treatments that are done as well for specific companies and depending on what the transaction is. Oh, let's say we want to start up a company or we want to grow our company. What are ways that an organization can raise funding, right? So we need money. We need money. So there's different ways to do it besides just going out and selling our product, right? So we, we wanna, uh, that's number one, is profitable operations. A lot of times if a company needs money, it just has to wait and let it let the profit come in from its operations, its day-to-day -day activities. But sometimes uh, companies don't wanna wait for that, right? Instead, they want to be able to leverage uh, debt, right? So they wanna go out and borrow money. That's one way to, another way to raise funding for a company. And then another way is to actually sell ownership in the company, right? So that's gonna be issuing stock, so sorry, selling stock. Uh, that's called equity funding, okay? So equity funding is gonna be um, another way to, to do that. So uh, when it first began operations, Amazon, for example, did not have positive income for over nine years. They were supported primarily by venture capital funding. Okay, so so uh, whereas many small businesses can only remain in operations for a few months uh, without generating positive income, a primary reason small businesses fail is lack of capital, and in early stages of business. So, so what's different between Amazon? Well, it's on a different scale and it's got different types of um, 
stakeholders that are interested in it succeeding. The venture capital funding is can, it can be debt and also equity funding, so it, either or. We're going to go ahead and go on to our this module 1.5 and talk about some opportunities that you ha can have in the accounting field, right? There are different attributes that are, are good to have if you're an accountant. So here, here's kind of a list of them. This can be with any type of profession that you have, right? Goal-oriented can be any type of profession. Problem solver, organized and analytical. Um, these are all good things to have. Um, the education, right? So if you're you're trying to build these attributes in yourself, awesome. The type of education you need is typically require a minimum of a bachelor's degree. Um, there are some accounting roles that require an associate's degree as well. And so a lot of bookkeeper type roles and um, clerk uh, roles in accounting require an associate's degree. Uh, and But a lot of managerial type rules require that bachelor's degree. What type of opportunities? So th these are many different routes or paths for accountants to, to go. All accountants don't become auditors or tax preparers, right? So there are many accountants that actually start up their own companies, have based their, their success on their ability to have that accounting information at their fingertips and, and usable because of their background in accounting. So I know that, for example, um, Reed Dame, who is actually one of the, the owners of Woodgrain Millwork, that took it from the small operation his father had into a large kind of multinational uh, company. Uh, his background is accounting, so he was an accounting major in school, and so it served him well over the years as he grew that company. All of these paths with the different types of employers, right? So if you want to go work for a corporation, there's auditors at corporations, but then there's also tax people at corporations. Same thing with nonprofit, public, uh, government entities. All of these paths can uh, be had at, at any of these ent types of entities. So here are a few of the uh, potential certifications for accountants. So typically these are, you're gonna need to have a bachelor's degree at least to be able to sit for a lot of these examinations to become certified. And um, a lot of these cert certificates are, uh, there's national certifications. Um, some of them also have state boards that will also issue a license to, uh, for example, the CPA is a state uh, board that, that um, manages the licensing for CPAs in a state. Those are a few, you know, definitely on, on all of these things. These are helping you if you want to go towards these certifications. It's helping you to have job skills and to be able to have job security and also uh, be able to have some mobility. There are uh, websites. If you search, you can get into some websites that will actually line out what you need to do to prepare to sit for the exams and become uh, certified in these different certifications. All right, so that wraps up the chapter. I uh, Hopefully you were able to kind of sit through and listen to some of this stuff. And, and you know, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. I think the main uh, goal for this chapter is to help you kind of just get your feet wet and get some vocabulary under your belt and then in the next uh, chapter we're really going to start on the hardcore financial accounting foundation right this right here this first chapter is just a, a first blush at what is accounting and kind of talk about what uh, why it, why it may be important to learn so anyways have a good day we'll talk to you later bye